What's happening? This is John Sue. Just slabber. This is brought to you by Hotbox Entertainment. Sir Logic. Buzz Lightyear. Potato. What's the um what's the K9? K92? N92. We've got a load of shit. We've got a load of sponsors. We've got loads of them. If you want a sponsor, shout a shout big OJ. He'll sign you up to the sponsorship list. But um, we're joined today by a very, very fucking special guest. It's a fucking Appreciate honor it. to have you on, my, my bro. Appreciate it. This is it's the Cage Warriors champion, the featherweight champion. Yes, sir. Paul Hughes. It's a G to have you on, yeah, my bro. Man, it truly it's is. It's good to be brother. on. It's good to be on. It's nice to be here. Like, it's fucking sick. So I was going to say Belfast's own Paul Hughes, mm-hmm. but I've seen that. Are you from Derry? I'm originally? from Derry originally, yeah, but I've lived in Belfast for a good bit, like, so represent them both. I heard that yeah. on the. I, I was watching one of your fights, and as they were introducing you, came to the climb, and you said, Shout out Derry and Belfast. Belfast. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, Go on, yeah, the yeah, So you're sure, represent from both. I yeah. love that. So, for sure. What, were you born in Derry then? Born in Derry, yeah. My family still live there. I was there last night. Like, only started being in Belfast when I was about 18. I went up and was going to Belfast Met, but really I was just training full time since I was 18, which would be friggin' a while ago now. 26 today, B Day podcast. So that's a minute I've been up in Belfast. Like, so. What a legend. Yeah, it's yeah, your my birthday. Dog. <laughs> he came on the podcast on his birthday. Yes, so sir. we're going to have to get you some birthday presents here. <laughs> Buzz said he's going to sort you out. Yes, I sir. got you the album. I'll have to get you some. Yeah, DJ thank you for the album as well. Signed it and all for me. Like, yeah, man. You know that, like, bro. Listen. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I know I'm a rapper and all, but like I was saying, like my favorite. You know, like type of people are fighters, bro. Mm. You know, I'm a, I love fighting. I've watched MMA and all like my whole life. You mm. know, so it's an honor to have you on, bro. I watched your fights too, and I was thinking this kid, bro. <laughs> and it's funny because you're baby faced, but yeah, you're yeah, animalistic, for sure, for bro. Sure. And it's your birthday, so you've turned 26 today. 26 today, yeah. I was Getting watching, old. and you've been you've been in Cage Warriors in a good few years. Yeah, I've been in it fucking three, four years now, like. Yeah, because yeah. I've seen an interview of you and you said, I know I'm only 22, but I'm mm, going to be champion. For sure, for sure. And that's what I did. Like, <laughs> yeah, fuck, dude. I've been fighting professionally since I was 19. Like, so Sick. it's been a while. Like, wow. It's been a while. Yeah, so I've had seven years now. Yeah, yeah. And um, so that's what I wanted to, I wanted to start then. So mm-hmm. you grew up, so you were born in Derry. When did you yeah. move to Belfast? Officially moved, like, fuck. Like, when I was 18, like, I came up and I was studying and met and stuff, but I was always coming back down and, and, and living with my parents and that, but but my mates all lived in Belfast. Right. Because they were, they were studying, like, so I just stayed up there with them most of the time, or a lot of the time. From there, then, I'd done a bit of traveling around the world, and then I came back, and I'd been living, like, fully in Belfast, like, four years. No, yeah, but I've been up since, as I say, about 18. I've been, like, in Belfast most days. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. So, and then... Um, so when you were in Belfast then, and then when did you, was it in Belfast that you started training MMA? No, I started actually in Derry when I was 15. Yeah, right. started there, eventually moved to a gym that was in Antrim. It was going between the two and then eventually moved up to Fight Academy here in right. Belfast. And how were you getting, how were you like getting to the gym and all? Just driving bro, well I, when I started when I was 15, 15 I was so had to get lifts like oh, sometimes. I was going to say, were you driving? Yeah, you know? I was fucking, <laughs> sometimes I was cycling to the gym like taking an hour, training for Sick. a few hours, cycling back like. But my and dad had me sort of back then, like Legends. so. Shout out to them because they. Was your supportive of it? Or? They were and they weren't at the start because I would have played a lot of GAA, a lot of hurling, a lot of soccer. Like right. I would have been flat out playing sport, and then I was like, I want to do MMA as well, and they were like, like that is too much. And then they let me go to like a beginner's program one time, and after like a month, I was just completely hooked. Yeah. Like I was hooked at just like slowly but surely all the other sports went out the window, Sick. and then once they seen like how much it meant to me and and. How much it was changing me for the better as well. Yeah. They were like, right, well, that's so fine. You, like you done all the Irish sports and the GAA, sure. well, like yeah. the hurling and all. Well, hurling and Gaelic. You, when did you do that? Uh, from young? From the way it's like that was that was my life growing up. Like I was so involved in sport. Like I was so competitive. Like playing at a really good level, and that was my life. I was just as obsessed wow. with GAA as I was with fighting now. Like yes. And then wow. I just found fighting, and it was just like. I just found the ultimate competition. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I did just you used to watch the fighting as a kid? or? Yeah, I mean, bits and bobs, you know, bits and bobs. But would you watch more of the Irish? The, the oh, it would have been all GAA when I was growing up. I, I loved boxing, obviously loved Rocky and things like that there. Obvious. And all them movers, like, 
just class. I was like, I'd love to do that someday. And I was always like, oh, can I try it? And they were like, no, you're frigging training every night of the week. You, yeah. you have no time. Oh, and then eventually I was like, sort of watching MMA when I was maybe like 15 around the age. Yeah. My mates, we were all watching, we were all staying up for the UFCs. Yeah, like, so it would have been back around in the, the day. McGregor era, wouldn't it? Then, Actually, it? do you know what? It was a couple or a few years before that. Anderson Silva was the GOAT back well, of then. Of course he was. Anderson Silva was the GOAT. Like, I remember his fight with Chael Sonnen. Yeah, the rematch obviously. was like the first one that I was like fucking into, like fully invested <laughs> yeah. in the storyline, staying up late with my mates watching it. Sick. And then that's it just came from there, like, and that was it. Sick, bro. Yeah, nah, bro. It's funny because, um, like, I, I started watching the UFC. I was like, I was only about seven, and there was mm -hmm. my sister's boyfriend. Uh -huh. He gave us the UFC too. Yeah, I mean, that's mad. Like, but that's then my mad. brother watched it his whole life then. I uh -huh. I stopped watching it a bit, and then, funny enough, my brother rang me and says, you need to watch Cage Warriors. Yeah, and yeah. he said, there's an Irish guy, oh, and he's right. about to win the lightweight championship, uh -huh. and he's the featherweight champ, yeah. and he's going to get into the UFC. Yeah. So I went and watched him live, yeah. McGregor. That was yeah, the first McGregor fight right. I ever watched, and it was his Cage Warriors Where fight. was that one at? Um, no, I didn't watch it live. Oh, I mean, I watched it on there. Yeah, that was yeah, the okay. first time I'd heard of McGregor, uh -huh. and Adam said, watch him, my brother. Yeah, yeah. So I tuned into Cage Warriors, yeah. watched him win his second belt, and I was yeah. like, yo. Yeah. So I was one of the guys excited for McGregor yeah. to get into the UFC, yeah. you know? Likewise, bro, because that was like, whenever I had just started, like a little bit of time, and someone had said that to me, that there's an, you know, there's an Irish guy that's like the champion in Cage Warriors and like could maybe go to the UFC someday. Yeah. And I was like, like an Irish guy in the UFC, like what? Oh, no, of course. Like, and I seen him and I was like, holy, like he's from down the road. Like, yeah, yeah. he's from down the road. And I remember when he got signed, I was like, this is insane. And that was next This level. is mental that this yeah, Irish guy's in the UFC. And like, the way he beat him so like, dominantly as oh. well. He just knocked him clean out, didn't he? Yeah, it was It was on, I think it was in like in Sweden or something, and the actual fight was at like 3 p.m. during the day. Sick. I remember watching it and just screaming the house down, yeah, and my mom was like, what I the did. fuck? Because I watched and I thought, right, because he reminded me a bit of my brother and all. Uh -huh. Like I said, he was very relatable, wasn't oh, he? Because everyone wild. just thought, like I said, he's down the road, and I, oh. think he, I was watching and I thought, this guy, man. And then, like, so when he got into the UFC, uh -huh. and then obviously the Marcus Brumich fight, uh -huh. now that's just what sent him yeah. mad, you know? But that's interesting, because he was mm -hmm. the last Irishman to hold the featherweight belt, Yes, I'm he? the first Irish guy since McGregor to hold that belt, like, so on, it's pretty bro. lit. It's well, that's some lit. big fucking footsteps. Yeah, to it be is, in. bro. we got the same management and all as well, so it's kind of, it's interesting. Sick. And then yeah. I was saying, I was watching all your old fights, and you were saying, uh, it's just Paul Hughes, he's mm -hmm. no nickname. Yeah. And then I said, have you got a new nickname? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, what's your new nickname? So the nickname, so my philosophy around this was always like, you don't choose your own nickname. It gets given to you. So yeah. I never had a nickname all through amateur. Like people would call me certain things, but nothing ever stuck. You don't choose it. Yeah. And then the first time, whenever I won the interim world title, McGregor shared it and he was like, go on, big news, Hughes. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, and bro. I was like, well, here we are. We fucking, we finally got the nickname. And who better to choose it than to go to the sport? Like, fucking so it's just so funny how them things happen. Because I, all, people always ask me that. And I was like, I don't choose it. No, I don't choose it. I and then that. the goat comes out and the chooses it for you. Like, it's you, fucking, you can't pick any. it's Couldn't wild. Couldn't be arguing with that then. I know. Like, so it's Paul Big News. New big News Hughes. Love yeah, it, yeah, bro. Yeah. No, it's, it's money, like. It's <laughs> shit. And listen, like you said, McGregor picked it, bro. That's military yeah, yeah. shit, bro. So I'm excited for his return as oh, well. Oh, big time, mate. Big time. You know, what do you think about his matchup with Chandler? Chandler. I think it's a good fight for him. Like, I think Chandler... If, it's actually so coincidental. I was training with Chandler there in my last camp for my last fight. Right. I was in Florida for part of that camp and I'd done loads of rounds with Mike Chandler. Did you? Yeah, What's he mate, like as a person? He, mate, the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Yeah, he comes across mate, a nice fellow. He's genuinely. a Christian and all, isn't he? I think he is, I yeah. But he's just the nicest guy you'll meet. Like, yeah. I was walking to that gym and seeing all these people like Michael Chandler, Kamara Usman was there the first day I was there. All these big names and we're training or whatever. And Mike Chandler just comes over to me. He's like, what's a crack bro? Like, What's your name? Like, where you come from? I was like, oh, really? He was like, we'll definitely get some training in. Yeah. I was like, he had no, he didn't have to come over to me. Of and course. Like, he didn't come over and have to do that. And then we got friendly, and then we ended up doing a bunch of rounds together. Like, wow. Yeah. What's it was he like the spar? Beast, man? absolute beast. He is what he is in the cage. He's just yeah. like the man. He's so jacked. It's unbelievable. We were doing yeah. strength conditioning all together. I was like, this guy is so fucking jacked. It's a joke. Like, he's yeah. such a bull. I can't remember. Um, he was. He was like a champion or something of another organization. Bell Bellator. Bellator. Yeah, he, yeah was he was the king of Bellator for Sick. years. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Now, because I see when he came in as well, mm -hmm. even like his losses, he, 
he lost like uh, yeah. with his like shit. he was an animal. Yeah, like, mad dog like dog. It'll be a, it'll be a tough fight for McGregor. It is a tough fight. But I do say I, I've never went against him. I always think nah, he'll do it. You know what I mean? Can't, that can't. last fight was terrible as well with a leg injury. You know? Yeah, fucking so unfortunate. So unfortunate, mate. Yeah, of course. But that'd be, everybody wants to see him back to his, to his best form, like. Yeah, everybody of course. Does. Well, I think he's got a good chance against Chandler because, mm. like you said, you know, the short, stocky wrestlers. Mm. McGregor always seems to. Yep. Yeah, well stylistically, it's a good fight for him, like for sure. Yeah, but I've seen him square up to him. He doesn't seem too much taller than Chandler. See, this is the thing about Chandler. People think he's that small. because he's so big that he's small heightways. Yeah. He's not that small heightways yeah. either. Like, he's yeah. a big dude. Well, I noticed like, that for the first time when I seen them square up there. Dude. I thought, whoa, he doesn't look yeah. that much taller. Like, not at all. That'll be a serious fight. Mm. Um, so, when did you... So, you, you, your first professional fight, you said you were 19. 19. And was that in Cage Warriors? It was actually in a show called Bama at the time. It was in the SSE. Yes. Believe it or not. Whoa, it was, your yeah, first yeah. fight was in the SSE? First professional fight was there. It was like, kind of took in short enough notice. Like, it was a... It was like a last minute sort of thing. I was just intending to fight amateur a little bit more. Yeah. And then the fight got offered him a coach at the time. And he just thought it was ready. He was like, if you want this, like, I think you're ready to go professional. Like, and I was just like, fucking throw me in there. Won my first round KO in like 90 seconds. Did fucking that ship just blew up from there. Like, wow. Yeah. How was it was a punching. Yeah. Punching. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I seen your head kick KO. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, was an argument. Uh, Leon Edwards. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, well, thank you. Like That's Leon a huge Edwards. compliment. I, I watched That's a huge it. I thought it was similar because he leaned in, dude. Yeah. The left high kick just straight up. Yeah. My um my voice is gone today because I've just got back from the Cage Warriors. Yeah. I was there at Stratford. Yeah. BT Sport. Um, watched well. Well, big Curry, Will Curry, though. big Drago. Yeah, the, man, yeah, did you see? Did you watch? I did film? watch it. I was in Donegal for the weekend, and I just put on the main event. I just timed it perfectly. It came on, and yeah. it was a dog fight. Like it yeah, was a it difficult was. fight. Like it was. I was. I would lost my voice. Mm -hmm. You want to see me on the Cage uh, Warriors yeah. um, Instagram? You uh -huh. know, if you go on the videos. Oh really? I... You can see me there, sat there <laughs> walking the walk, and I, I yawn at one part. No, it was funny, uh -huh. bro. Well, let's have a look. But um, it was great experience going in, mm -hmm. and um. Well was a G, bro. He'd done mm. proper well. Um, the guy kept on, like, um, like reversing him, rolling mm. on him. Did ah, you see that weird was, roll? Yeah, like, it was, such, it was such a difficult, weird, oh, scrappy fight. Me. Like, it was annoying me watching it, and I was like, this is so tiring for this guy. Like, yeah. And he just keeps, like, getting his way out and getting on top, and I was like, oh, it was that funny, is tiring bro, shit. Like. Um, so I was there with my big mate. Mm. Uh, to cheer well on, there was these two Scouse fellas then sat, like, down beside me. And they were there for Mickey mm. then, the other family, mm. you know. But they're there a chair and one time to see when Mickey got him into like a Kimura. Mm. Did you see that? Ah, uh, fuck, at I can't even mind at the minute. Going, he was going, he was trying for oh, submission fuck. for his arm. Oh, fuck, oh, yes, yes, bad. yes. Well, um, the, the, oh, Scouse fuck, boys, the Scouse boys sat beside me were shouting, break his fucking arm. Aye. Aye. But it infuriated me, you know. So when Mickey got out, um, when um, Will got out of it, I was shouting, fucking smash his fucking face fuck. And then yeah. I was losing my voice, and all, you know. But it was funny, they looked at me then. And I remember thinking to myself, like, See if that was like my brother in there uh -huh. or something like my blood brother, like oh, my big brother. And yeah, I heard yeah. someone shouting break his arm and all that. Like, I couldn't cope with it. I hear it's it's fucking it gets fucking vicious in them crowds it at times. Does. My last fight was fucking it was hectic. Like. I seen your I seen um I seen everyone go I hear yeah, it in your like, fight I, I seen um Molly Meatball cheering. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, you seen that. That was hilarious. She's Irish roots, I think her parents maybe or she's definitely Irish roots yeah. and she was going mad Molly, with the flag and Molly's all, like, one of my like because struggle like watching a lot of female fights but um molly's ah, she's else. beast and oh. she she's that exciting and she oh, was like yeah. a full-on animal did you see the fucking spinning this, the spinning i was there line? in london that no. it was just after one of my fights and my management brought me to the fights and that was unbelievable too okay, sick, bro. Too it sick. Was, it when was... it comes to like when it comes to like um Characters in yeah. MMA, her and Paddy. For sure. Are fucking Big characters. W was Paddy a featherweight champ in Cage Warriors? I think he, aye, he was a featherweight champ early in his career and then he moved up the lightweight and I, th I think he won the lightweight belt then. Did he? I think so. Is aye. he a two weight champ? Or maybe he didn't win the lightweight one. I don't think he I think did. he maybe got beat actually in the, in the, yeah. in the title fight. First time uh, I ever watched Paddy mm -hmm. was, um, I think it was on UFC Fight Pass mm -hmm. um, on a McGregor night. Mm -hmm. 
and um, he was wearing his ginger trunks. Ah, and uh, yeah, and yeah, he vomited yeah. after the fight. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, remember yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Oh, that was raw. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing thinking. to see what he's come on. The Paddy's one doing of my well. favourites, bro, and I love him the way he's doing his podcasts. Yeah, and, uh, and he's interviewing yeah. all the old fighters and all. Yeah, yeah, bro. He's yeah. Look, he's making moves. Yeah, uh, did you meet Paddy? Have you met Paddy? I, I mean, we were fighting Cage Warriors all the way up the last few years, like so. He would have been a lot of the shows, like yeah, for sure. Man. Yeah, yeah, he's a cool kid, man. I do like the Scousers, you yeah, know, they yeah, are yeah. funny. Mate, they're very like us, like, aren't they? they are, you know what I mean? They definitely are. I love Molly as well. Like I said, watching them, bro, coming up in the UFC, it was something mm -hmm. special. Yeah, and then sure. Molly actually, she do, her next fight after that, she'd done the same thing, didn't she? Aye, did she, she spanned again the and then finished her, I think, yeah, not long after that, which yeah, is, you don't see finishes like that a yeah, lot in exactly. women's M M MMA. Like. No, nah, I'm telling you, bro, mm. there is, like I said, a, I did struggle with a, a lot of the um, women's MMA, you know. I mm. do like, don't know. Sometimes I usually use it as like a coffee break or something. I'm watching, <laughs> you know, UFC and it's like a girls' fight. I'd go right. It's time to roll a suit or something. Yeah. Like that, you know what I mean? But um, but here the level of it now is fucking. You yeah. see some of the fights and you're no, like, they're right. Jesus That's Christ, what I'm saying. Some of it. Like I think the first one that I really really like paid attention to was Amanda Nunes. Ah, oh, killer! And, uh, like when she was killer. just I remember when she had knocked out um, Cyborg. Oh, oh my god and I was that just fight. like holy shit yeah, you know fuck. I wanted to start seeing Amanda fighting men yeah yeah, yeah. no <laughs> joke it was getting to that level where <laughs> was. she was just killing everybody like. and that really was bro yeah. she was something special mm. so like I said and then I loved that wee Wei Ling yeah oh my god yeah. her fights with Joanna like yeah, have sick. been some of the best fights you'll see at MMA Literally, period like, bro. so oh. like I said that, don't get it like don't get it twisted there is some girl fighters oh, and stop. Molly's up there for me just mm. in sheer entertainment for sure well. I love well, she's militant ent entertainment business and like I thought that. it was hilarious did you see her and Patty then after their fights and they mm. get all their food and all and they're eating, yeah, they're yeah, eating yeah, their yeah. interviews yeah know? their characters like for sure yeah they are G bro mm. it's funny so the Cage Warriors thing bro mm. Um. so the, your first your first fight was at the SSC you knocked him yeah. out in 90 seconds yeah first, <laughs> first professional fight was in there blew up online it was done like 3.2 million hits or something wow straight away like and this just me just fighting amateur took a short notice pro fight shit just blew up like that like so sick and then what happened did you get signed to Cage Warriors then or what so fuck funny enough well, not funny enough, it was terrible. At the time, I ended up having a real bad injury streak. So I ended up being, from a pro debut, I didn't fight again until two years after that. Fuck. I broke my hand four times. So I did good surgery here, as you can see. Fuck. So yeah. I kept, I broke my hand in that fight, came back, back to training, signed in our fight, broke the other hand, and then kept re-breaking this hand over two years, tried to get back, ended up finally getting surgery on it. Took like six months to a year to let it fully mend, and it was over two years before I actually returned to fighting again. Right. which was fucking mental like because I had such a big blow up straight away young kid like fucking of course, had the offers the hype had the well. offers yeah. from everywhere you know yeah. after that fight and then just kept trying to come back kept getting injured it wow. was just everything just taken away from you for a couple of years yeah that's difficult. some mental discipline bro difficult did you not feel it like mentally in that as well for sure it was one of the most difficult times of my life like for sure when I look back on it it's kind of I still don't really know how I got through it to be honest yeah well, I know what got me through it, and it was just that deep, deep core belief that I have the ability to be a world champion someday. Yeah. I just knew, like, if you can get through this some way, even if you only have to use one hand, yeah. you have it, you have the sauce, like, you can get there. Yeah. And I knew, I just knew deep down, no, everyone can tell you whatever they can, whatever they want, but if you don't believe that shit deep down, and I thankfully had that fire in my belly to get me through that, yeah. and I made my return then after that, and fucking the rest is history. And like, where did you been, make your return? Uh, in Belfast. Was it? Yeah, yeah, in Belfast again, bro. It was fucking lit. In Cage Conflict, it's a show in Belfast here. Funny enough, it's on a Saturday. Yeah. Came back, fought twice there, and then fought for Cage Warriors and BT and, and the Unplugged Studio where you yes. were at. Yeah. And then that was it, signed to Cage Warriors, and here we are. Sick, like. yeah. bro. And then when you went there and done that, so you, um, the SSE and then mm -hmm. Belfast... You were always fighting Northern Ireland then, wasn't it? Was it yeah, on the plug? Was that your first time fighting in England? Yeah, was it, it was. It was, yeah, yeah, it was actually. Yeah, that's funny. Sick. And then yeah, what yeah. did you do? Like, did you is it just go and stay at a hotel or whatever? Uh, in London? Yeah. Yeah, they, they flew me over. Like, they, it was actually an, it's funny. It's a funny story behind that too. The Cage Warriors wanted to get me matched for that, but I couldn't get fights because I had just had, I'd finished everybody I'd fought and I'd really badly yeah. hurt them. yeah. And uh, he's laughing. He's yeah. like, <laughs> but that's what happened. I couldn't get fights anywhere. Cage Warriors were trying really hard to get me a fight for for them. And the day before the weigh-in, they hit me up and said, "We finally got you someone." 
Like, cause we had a bunch of people just saying yes and then pulling out, pulling out. Yeah. Two days before the fight, I'm sitting in my friggin' in my room in Belfast, and they go, "Here, we've got your fight. You need to fly like in the morning. It's at welterweight." What? <laughs> I'm a fucking featherweight. Like, well, it was it was 74 kilo. The fight was out, so technically welterweight fight. It's the only fight I could get on that short notice. And so when, I was how like, long "Was it notice?" I flew over the next day and weighed in. Did yeah, weighed in, but I didn't have to cut weight because it was I was already under the weight class. Yeah. Fought a guy who's fucking big Polish dude, big dude, like. Wait in and I was like, wait in. I was like, oh, he's not that big. <laughs> Seen him in fight day across the cage from me, and I was like, this guy's fucking so much bigger than me. Yeah, it's a joke. Shit. But I was like, here, I'm here now. I'm in the door of cage where fought, took him down, subbed him in the first round. We're rear naked choke, and that was it. Got a contract. That, yeah, your all your submissions were rear naked chokes. Yeah, aren't yeah, they? for sure. Number one, that. number one in the book, like for sure, highest yeah. percentage submission. Yeah, yeah. Right. Militant. So it's been fucking it's a funny ride so far, like. Yeah, and I noticed that your um, your record it's like very balanced. Yeah. You've like it was like three. What well, you're nine and one, aren't you? Nine and one. Yep. Yeah. Ten and, and zero, oh, really though. Yeah, Ten and zero, oh, really. Seen that as well, bro. I know, but you've re- listen, even <laughs> nah, like, like you avenged it properly for anyway, sure. didn't you? For sure. But um, your all your wins it was like three by decision, three mm-hmm. knockout and three. Yeah, sub. yeah, yeah. That's true. I think that my first seven fights were all finished. Yeah. So they were within that, the distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love that too because I'll tell you what, it means more as well to go mm-hmm. five rounds. You know. What oh, I mean? here I I've got some experience in the bank. Like my yeah. last three last two fights have been five rounders. Yes. And I've been maybe three camps because one of them I I got an injury I had to pull out, but I've got that five round experience in the bank. Like going yeah. into the UFC, like. Yeah, Do you know what you I mean? Can't, you can't, um, you, you can't fuck with that. Bro. Yeah, That's, you can't buy that. Like yeah, world course. title experience, big high pressure fights. Yeah. I've got it in the bank. Like, and um, did you? Did you ever do jujitsu on its own? Like nah, or? I actually just started day one MMA. Believe it or not, like yeah. just fucking day one, that was it. So You're I'm just pretty a pure lucky, MMA like fighter, pure MMA right? fighter. Yeah, I'm lucky, Sick, like. Bro. Well, I can yeah. tell by the record. As yeah, well, yeah, true. It's all, it, it sort of shows that. Like, you know yep. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, so, who was your favorite fighters, bro? Bro, like as I said earlier about when I started getting Anderson really, Selva. Anderson so was the he was yeah. the goat. Like yeah. he was the Spider-Man. untouchable back then. Yeah, like just godlike figure, like a godlike figure, like just knocking out Forrest Griffin with that pullback that jab. Was he was the it man. Was like he was in the Matrix. Literally, like I, ho- I hope to meet him someday, just to thank him and just be like, get a picture with him and just be like, yeah. like this is the guy. Like. Yeah, he, yeah. Is, he, he was is. the original, my yeah, favorite fighter. I did love um, Anderson Silva. Mm-hmm. Did you ever, um, yeah, Anderson Silva, what about, um, who was it as well? That he, that when he fought Michael Bisping in London. Oh, I, oh that was stop. Insane. Bisping, I mean, Bisping is like an unsung hero almost yeah. in the game, like an absolute legend of yeah, the game. Yeah, Bisping's one of my heroes, like, yeah. especially what you're saying about overcoming adversity mm. and, like, you know, injuries. Mm. My man got his eye fucking mm-hmm. bust out. He never even said nothing. Bro, he yeah. was passing them medical exams by, like, fucking lying and yeah. fucking, like, I think he was, like, paying people off and shit and Gosh. being like, look, I need to get... I need to get in the cage like yeah. just whatever I need to do here He's too lie or pass these exams somehow yeah <sighs> he won the he won the UFC belt with one eye now that's I, th- I genuinely think Mike Bisping has got one of the greatest sporting stories no, ever he does, he does. ever you have ever you read see, his book or his, um, yeah, or his documentary book, on went, but, um, I was living in Spain at the time but uh-huh. he came over to Man- he came back to Manchester for a uh-huh. book signing uh-huh. at the Trafford Centre uh-huh. so okay, I told yeah, my yeah. dad to go and get me his book oh, and my dad met him got a photo with him yeah, and all, you know, yeah, that's I was thinking he's a fucking G because yeah. um, a lot of my mates knew him as well when he was a uh-huh. DJ yeah, DJ Mikey B. This is hilarious that he was a fucking DJ. Yeah, like, he's a G, bro. <laughs> Imagine he used to say he used to get in fights and all, you know, with the nightclubs. Dude, that. that's wild. DJ Mikey B is fucking yeah. hilarious. Like, but what I loved, bro, the most about Bisping was is, you know, he never ever gave up. And everyone read him off then. Everybody. Like, they never thought he was so ever going to be a champ because he always, what my, what Bisping would do is he'd get so far up and then mm-hmm. just before his, um, mm-hmm. he, like, if he beat this guy, he's getting a title shot. Mm-hmm. But then he'd lose terribly. Yeah. And then everyone, like, uh, yeah. you know, and then when he beat him, um, Rock Hold, bro, it was probably the best. Even, you know, when he goes, you sound like every self help book. Every <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe it, you can see. Shut the fuck shut up. up. <laughs> <laughs> and Man, then. Like, he was, because. The thing about him was back then there was no USADA. So he was fighting like fuck and he was just coming up against these guys like Vitor Belfort back in the day, just just to the gills, yeah. like 
TRT tour, as they would call yeah. him. Like, and he had to fight all these dudes, I like know, the know. whole his whole career. And the best thing was, I believe he was very staunch anti. Um, I think steroids so, for wonder. sure. What for do you sure. think of the steroids in it? In the yeah. sport, I don't think. I think there's always going to be guys that are cheating the system. Yeah. But with USADA, USADA is a pretty legit organization. Mm -hmm. Like people are getting popped now. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Back in the day, it was fucking rife. Yeah. Like sure. everybody was yeah, just I back mean, in the day. Of like, course it was. I mean, yeah. especially like the origins of ah, you know the UFC. Stop. But I think as it turns into an actual, yeah. you know, it's one of the most predominant sports now in the yeah. world, isn't it? And I don't. That, yeah, I don't think people are getting away. They shouldn't be getting away with it now. USADA should be should be at that level. I think they are, like. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, because, um, like I said, you know, it is, it's, it's madness when, when you look at it and you can tell mm -hmm. as well. You can't oh, tell. Oh, you can't. Like Vitor Belfort, when he stopped taking it, you could really see, like, you know. Yeah, there was many guys whenever USADA came into the UFC, but just their careers yeah. completely dropped off, like, so it's interesting. Yeah, it is mad. It's mm. madness, it is. But, um... So the featherweight, bro, the, the featherweight division then in the mm -hmm. UFC. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So mm -hmm. you have, have you defended? Your, you were the interim champ, uh -huh. weren't you? Mm -hmm. And then you, you, unified. Had, you had to unify. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. after you unified, have you got a next fight lined up? I have nothing confirmed at the minute. I sort of thought, and everyone thought, like a, the winner of my fight against Jordan would like get signed directly to the UFC like yeah. straight away. Of course. But that didn't happen yeah. directly after. But we, ha we have been talking to them. We have a great relationship with them. My management, as I was talking about, Manage McGregor, they're part-time sports, they're called. They're the best in the game, like. Yeah. And we have a good relationship with them. And there's been things there. Just right now, nothing has been absolutely perfect for us. So Who's the... Why don't you just say you want to fucking... You want call to somebody out? No, in feather... No, in cage warriors. Why don't you just go for the lightweight belt or something? That Many people were saying that. Many people were saying that. But look, the way it is now, it's like... I've, I've, I pay my dues there. Of Do you know course, what I mean? I've, no, you're damn right. I've, I hundred percent. The division I was in was by far the hardest, the yep. deepest division, and I took out every single person. Yeah. Defended the belt, or sorry, I didn't defend the belt. Unified it against the guy that beat me before. So, that that chapter's. It's just like I said, the last Irish man to be the featherweight. He became the lightweight. Yeah. Too. Nah, you that's true. I'd say. <laughs> fuck. You need to say fuck that. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, like, here I wouldn't roll it out. You know, I wouldn't roll it out. Yeah, nah, yeah. like bro, listen, I love um. When I went and seen Kids Warriors too, it was a fucking yeah. bad boy event, mm. and I did feel like it was um, felt like part of the UFC. Sure, yeah. said UFC fight pass on it. Yeah, there's a big connection there. Yeah, there's a big and connection. seen all the champions up on the wall, not yeah. Paddy the Batty. Mm -hmm. That's what I noticed. That's why I thought McGregor was unique because when you looked at all the other champions, mm -hmm. he's there with the two belts. Ah, okay, you yeah, know, that's, you see them all. With he'll the always have that, like yeah, exactly. the, the original champ, champ, like yeah, in there. Yeah, nah, right. was, bro. It was special. Like I said, he transcended the sport. He did. You know, and he sure. like um he got a lot of young ones on mm. it, you know. Definitely did, mm. bro. So um obviously you need to get into the UFC, bro. Mm. That's the key. I was gonna say you should be coming out to my born in Belfast, but you're um you were born in Derry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I have to do your remix. <laughs> you I might have to. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be lit. <laughs> and, uh, you, bro. But um so when you get into uh -huh. the UFC, bro, I was looking at the featherweight rankings. Uh -huh. There's some fucking beasts. Oh, in there, bro. it's a deep I division. Mean, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I'd say Volkanovski is probably my favorite, one of my all-time mm. favorite fighters. I, yeah. think he, I think when it's all said and done, he might be known as one of the goats of all time. I think so. For you sure, know? look at his last fight. I actually trained with him before, believe it or not. I trained yeah. with him when I was in Thailand. I'd done a good stint out there. Great dude, like, yeah, great, great dude, dude bro. great like dude. Said, he's just that Australian yeah. guy. Yeah, he is just casual, laid back, like, yeah. doesn't take himself too serious, yeah, like, of course. but here, beast, like, bro, beast. he's too animalistic, mm -hmm. and it's the rugby you see mm -hmm. as well, because he, mm -hmm. he, was, he was heavy, mm -hmm. wasn't he, when he was yeah. a rugby player? I have the GAA back in those, so I'll be all right. Exactly. I got no, the GAA. The yeah, GAA yeah. is the Irish Fucking right. stuff, you exactly, know? Exactly, like, and that is hard graft, like, did you ever get blasted in your knees and all them hurling? Oh, man, fucking hurling's wild, man. You grew up tough, like, where I'm from. Like you do, yeah, I can you do. Imagine. So um, you don't be doing no GA no more. Nah, I would. Ah, I would I love to. Getting injured, injured for your here, fights, no joke. You know My brother I mean? still plays, and he's fucking injured all the time. Bust the bets, is he? Injured all the time, like yeah. so. I think whenever maybe when I retire, I'll go back and play the for the reserves or something like that, yeah, like because right. it's it's just the community type thing. Do you know what I mean? Of course. 
So, um, but your trajectory then is is you're focused on trying to get into the UFC, bro. Oh yeah, no, I'll be in the UFC very soon, like for yeah. sure, for sure. I've done the work, like. Hundred percent. And yeah, and it's just time to climb another mountain. Do you know what I mean I climbed the Cage Warriors one? Done exactly what I said I would do when I was that just that young kid coming up. I'm gonna do exactly the same in the UFC, like. Nah, I believe yeah. it, bro. I believe it, bro. What did you think of um, Ian Gary? Mate, as beast, well? mate, friend of mine, like, um, mate, he is. He's blown me away. Like, I knew how good he was, like, yeah. but each fight, his improvements are, they're insane. How good, how much he's improving every fight. Yeah. Like it's his last fight was something to behold. Like know. to that's come back from the injury too. Dig, that's what I'm saying, yeah. bro. Because it's all right yeah. when you're the hammer, but when mm -hmm. you're the nail, you need yep. to be able to you're take right. it. Yep. You know, it's proper. Here. I was dead impressed with him as well. Funny mm -hmm. enough, um, in the Cali cave in Spain, mm -hmm. um, a couple of boys from Dublin came in. This mm -hmm. was about three years ago, now three and a half years ago, and they said, um, "My best mate." Oh, Ian Gary, and he's, he's getting signed to the UFC soon. Yeah. So I sent him a message and I was saying, Come on, bro, yeah, we're supporting that's class, you. Like, bro. you know? That's class. But he's a fucking G and yeah. bro, to see what he's done and progressing. I think it. I think he'll be champion the next two years, honestly. Yeah. I think he'll be champion the next two years. Listen, he's he's that still good. undefeated, isn't he? Undefeated. Yeah. He is. What is he eleven and oh, is he? I think and he's 11 and 0 now. He's going for 12 yeah. and 0. He's fighting Daniel Rodriguez here in a couple is of months. He? Big fight. Big fight. Oh, shit, bro. Yeah. That's what I mean because I was thinking about like like Volkanovski and then like yeah, Rodriguez and now. Mm -hmm. These boys seem about like I don't know. I haven't seen them in real person, but mm -hmm. some of them, they're stacked. It's, uh, that's why I was thinking like shit. A lot of them mm -hmm. are big lads. Oh, for aye. Aye. Weight, like, big dudes, they? mate. Big dudes. Like people you know cut a lot I mean? of weight. Like, yeah, so of do. course. But it'll mm. be hard work, bro. Like, like well, you said, it's a it's big got... mountain to climb, but I'm, I'm willing. Yeah, do you know what man, I mean? I've got time on my side. I've got the mindset. I've got all the tools. Like, I've got all the tools. It's just down to me to just continue to sacrifice everything to get there. Like, yeah. so I'm willing. Well, I watched your your style, bro, and I thought this guy is proper. Like, you're a, a real. Like, you're not just a striker or nothing. No. You're like a real MMA. True. You know what I mean? It's like all rounded, yeah, well yeah. rounded. For sure. A militant, bro. You just have to keep cracking on, my brother. Have to, bro. Have to. Keep going to the top, like keep going. Yeah, sick shit, bro. Mm. What about music? Yeah, what type of music you into? Oh, it's gotta be hip hop, like for you sure. You love the yeah, hip hop, bro. Hip -hop, so who did bro. you grow up on? Who did I grow up on? Who were the biggest? Well, obviously, love Fifty Cent, like Eminem back in the day and all as well. When you're growing up, it's like the shit, like yeah. it's the shit, like. But I didn't start getting hugely into hip hop and for the last maybe like five, six years, like. Yeah, and then speaking of that, like we were talking about the, the local scene here as well. Like I've been following it too. Like, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean, trying that, to tap in a little bit. Into the hot yeah, box yeah. yeah. For or I've seen all the hot box shit. Like, so I have. So shout out, shout out the big man over there. Like, but now I'm on it. I I just see so many parallels between my game, like and the come up, and I just relate to the to the values and the core of hip hop. Do you know what I mean? Like the young kid, the fucking. The, like the confidence that like I'm gonna be the shit like I'm the fucking man I just relate to all that yeah, shit so much do you know what I mean like deep shit so when I see people from here doing it too it's like I, I love that shit like yeah, I love that shit man. for sure definitely yeah. bro like I said you know um, I've seen it especially in Irish hip hop like um my mates are versatile mm -hmm. and I've seen them there supporting Snoop Dogg yeah why wow, like did you see that yeah i seen that yeah, bro, yeah. it was fucking Gina. that's imagine that like imagine coming up and fucking from Dublin and yeah. thinking you're yeah, gonna support Snoop Dogg yeah, here one day just young fella ah, yeah, like, brother, they smashed it brother yeah, I'm telling bro. you this right see even the tune with Coolio when I yeah, did oh, bro. that's my favourite Irish rap song of really? all time yeah yeah love that bro think it's next level because mm -hmm. It wasn't just a collab with yeah. a, a rap superstar. No, there was more. It was, it was yeah. deep. And you could sense the brotherhood yeah. in it as well. Yeah. And then, like, when he died, Coolio and all, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And they went to his funeral and Yeah, that. yeah. No, I've seen that at all. Like, it's 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 so, it's so interesting. Like, it's yeah. interesting they developed that relationship and sort of, like, the culture. It's just an interesting mix into the culture, like, for yeah, sure. Like, But I think it's definitely not the first and won't be the last sort of mix over from the Irish hip-hop, like, going over to the States yeah. and, and obviously UK. It's... It's interesting. It'll no, be interesting it to see. Definitely is, bro. It definitely is, mm. my bro. So you like Fifty Cent and all? You yeah, yeah. Growing up, like for sure, for sure. But definitely more so in a hip hop recently, like. Yeah. yeah. Man. And anything else apart from a hip hop or what about Grab and all? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Bits and Bob, like a bit of techno here and there, like you know. But nah, mostly hip hop, like for sure. Yeah, yeah. Man. yeah, like I, I'm all I like the also. What about Irish music? Yeah, I love. I mean, I grew up in traditional music. Yeah. We would have my like man and I would very be into it, and we would have went to festivals and all like traditional festivals back in the day. Like, bro, that's what you need to do. Yeah. That's what McGregor was. Um, 
That's why it was so fucking yeah, special too. For sure. Because it came out with a foggy dew. Yeah. And then yeah. it just kicked in the no, no, yeah. no, Torios. Yeah, yeah. I'm going bro. for that kind of vibe. The yeah, last one, to. I walked out to Grace the last time. So, did did, you? yeah. Did Grace walk? into uh, into victory lap by Nipsey. Military. Yeah, that's been the walkout tune for the world title fight. That's so, shit, yeah, bro. That's yeah, what yeah. Mickey done too, didn't he? Yeah. He comes out to Grace and then he it yeah, turns into like a well, hip-hop. But that's actually why I walked out to Grace for that one because Mick was there. He was cage side for that no, one. He told not. me he was coming in. And I was like, the fight before that, I walked out to Old Triangle yes. into Victory Lap. So I was like, Mick was like, I'm going to be there. And I was like, pay homage to one of the Irish goats. Like, I love that. Bro. Yeah, you so never it's fucking. You fucking stop doing that when you get into the UFC. Nah, never, you know, bro. Make, pick a good Irish tune to Bro, come I'm to. representing, like, I'm representing. And yeah. it gets me there too. Do you know what I mean? Victory Lap is like, Victory Lap is sick. And, and it's unbelievable but that's kind of for me but like the Irish is like it's for all of us do you know yeah. what I mean because like you have that different connection everybody that's there watching they've paid the money they've all come over to support something that just relates to them is like fucking we know this song yeah, it's like true. do you know what I mean these other dudes like Jordan's fans are obviously English dudes they didn't know Grace but all we were all belting it out like and then you can't, you can't um Stop but see how powerful it is there. you know in the whole arena my fa- one oh, of my yeah. favourite thing of fighting is just the arena yeah. Just coming out and it's the main event and your music's on and everybody's just going fucking mental. And, do you, and what, how do you deal with like the nerves in that situation? Now? See, the nerves are gone by that point. Now I'm for sure. I'm I'm a normal. I'm the normal throughout the day. Everybody's nervous. Yeah. Like you're in the venue or like you're warming up. It's like and you keep I'm going to fight like somebody. Course, see when yeah. the music's on. You're see when the music's the on. I am like. I feel like I'm a king. I have to feel like I'm the king of the world almost. Because yeah, yeah, you're going in to fight somebody. Removal of doubt is the most important thing. See, when the music comes on, I'm just so unbelievably present with with everything. Like it's it's one of my favorite things in fighting. It's one of the greatest experiences in the world. Yeah. Walking out to like songs like that and just having a fucking arena full of people going absolutely mental. Of course, it's bro. fucking lit. Like, nah, it's yeah, military, yeah, it'll yeah. Be exciting as well as when you get to that when the, the UFC as mm-hmm. well, and then it'll be a bigger, you know, bigger I mean? and better. It'll be Vegas soon. It'll be MSG soon. I, that's what I've envisioned for years, and it's just around the corner. Like I that's the beauty it, of it. As I soon as they put it. me on a big Vegas card or a big MSG card. We'll be there in force, like it's long overdue. There hasn't been no Belfast ones, yeah. And Belfast, I mean, if they brought it back to Belfast someday, uh, like, uh, shit, bro. Was, like, was, the, was the UFC in Belfast? The U has been UFC's been here twice, I think, years and years ago, and then maybe four or five years ago. But they didn't, they didn't really have more, many local guys or any local of guys, course. really. The first one they had two local guys on it, Stevie Lynch and Colin Robinson, who were their first ever people from the island of Ireland to yes. be in the UFC. But the last one, there wasn't anybody on it, so it's not the same. Is he from Bush Mills or something? Norman Parks, Bush Mills. Maybe the other dude is too. I'm not. I'm not quite sure yeah. to be honest. I remember though, I was a Northern Irish guy. One that yeah, came, you know, I knew that because you know in the UFC game. Uh uh-huh. They were like, a- no, but you could um. You- yeah, when it tells you you could pick, you know, when you're making your uh-huh. own fighter, uh-huh. it told you like Dublin, Ireland, and uh-huh. it said Bush Mills, Northern Ireland. Oh, really? There you are. You yeah, that's they, lit. They don't even do yeah, yeah, so that's fucking class. There must be a fighter in this. Movie, yeah, yeah. You know, there but, you are. But definitely, bro, you need to represent mm. it. That'll For be sure, sick, bro. bro. That's the dream. It is, bro. And then, like you said, um, you know, just fuck everything else off, stay mm-hmm. focused. And that's what I loved about McGregor. He said he was. Um, he said he was just obsessed. Mm. Everything he done, he just studied it. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I loved the fighting more than anything. It's probably one of my biggest passions. Mm. You know, like I'd always sit there and like watch all the fights, and mm. you know, I do love it, bro. Yeah. Like I definitely For do, sure. and I think it's like um, it's it's the most like you're in tune with reality. Yeah. With it, you know what I mean? It's There's honest, no man. It's like, honest. It's as honest it as honest it gets. Work, it? It's as honest as it gets. At the end of the day, you can just talk all the shit you want, but at the end of the day, you have to get in that cage and fight somebody. So yeah. it's the most honest thing. So it yeah, is. Yeah, it's militant, bro. Mm. It is. Well, listen, I think you're going to fucking smash it, brother. Appreciate it, bro. I do, I do. I think you're going to get into the UFC and fucking sure. become champ. You have to do it for Belfast, bro. For sure. Definitely do, bro. That's listen, the plan. I fucking love talking with you today, bro. Yeah, mate. It absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. I can't my wait dog. to see I appreciate you speak it. again, my bro. Keep For sure. it up as well. My man. Yo, much love. Thank Peace. you, guys. Respect. Yes, sir.